recording uh, up and running. We got the recording right. cloud. So uh, everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Fausto from Cyber Trade University. We're going to do a two-part event here. I got two of my favorite friends here for such a long time. I think I know Kathy and Boris for almost, I got to be 20 what, years. 20 years? It's got to be 20, 20 years, years, right? I think it's yes. been that long. Yeah, 12, long, long time. All the way back to the FXCM days. We've done so many events together. Uh, probably mm -hmm. the most notable one is that we did a lot of the Money Shows events together. And, uh, and so on. And, you know, great traders always surround themselves uh, when it comes to trading. And they just have such a great reputation on, on their alert service. They stuck around forever. And, you know, they live local nearby here in New York, too. So one thing that's great about being in New York is you surround yourself with great traders. You know, it is the financial capital of the world. But on the other hand of it, um, they have a great, great product. Yeah, that was a bit, you know, those are the good old days back then. Yeah, thanks, Tom, for sharing that. But, um, but they're going to... Uh, Kathy just posted a link there. She's going to talk a little bit about, you know, regarding about the workshops she's going to be doing. She's going to answer some of your questions in great detail. And uh, like I said, we're going to go about an hour. It is being recorded. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to kind of, you know, hold them out to the end, unless it's something quick she's talking about, and then they'll both be able to answer it. But uh, guys, thanks so much for being here. And I look forward. I know everyone's looking forward to listening in, and we'll see you in a little bit. All right. You All right. Great. Uh, you, I think you guys should have control of the. We should, yeah. Let uh, me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and do my share screen. This will stop other people's shares. Do they want to share? Continue. Yes, and I want to share. Um. There it is. Let me see if I can share this. And you guys able to see this? Yep. Uh, we see okay. your presenter screen, not the full screen. Yeah. Okay. So that's why. That's why I was. I was concerned about. So let me just see if I can go into. Yeah. Um, just hit play on the left hand side i think no, no it's, not, it's not it so uh, no it's cannibal live um uh, 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 it's to the right go to the far right the right tab yeah edit no you have three tabs open the furthest tab to the right that's no your, no just go to the front. Wait, wait, hold on. Present. Hold on. Yeah. Present, present full Get screen. Get the fast, the first slide for us. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. Sorry. Sorry. Hold on a second. Sorry. Just the. La, 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 la. Sorry, guys. Kathy put me in charge of presentation for the first time, and you see how well that works mm -hmm. out. Okay. We're good. We're ready to roll. <laughs> now you have me on, on full control. Daniel, um, wow. You were a high schooler when I met you at you can't be that much older in 2021 <laughs> oh you say that I was a high schooler I wish I looked like a high schooler in 2021 <laughs> um but I will take that compliment all right thank you everyone for joining us today um and today what Boris and I will talk about is how to become a better day trader I think between faster community as well as our community most of you are um you know interested in day trading, or you're already an avid day trader. So um, we want to share with you some um, tips on how to become a better day trader, because this is what we do every single day. And then we'll also share, you know, some, uh, you know, strategies uh, that you may want to consider for day trading as well. So there's definitely something for everyone. Um, let's get uh, going, Boris, and okay. let me talk about the day trading tips that we will be sharing with you. Now, when as when it comes to becoming a day trader, you know, strategy is important, but there are also other elements of the trade that are um, important as well. And, you know, having day traded and traded in the markets for more than two decades, I have found that these are some of the mo more um, important things that helped me become a more successful day trader. And I talk about this every single day as a part of our BK trading community. It is important to know what to, when to trade, and when not to trade. So we'll talk about the best and worst times to trade. Then we'll talk about um, the importance of key levels and how you can incorporate that into your day trading. We'll go over the right risk reward for day traders, and that may not be what you're normally taught. Um, we'll talk about uh, trading targets and how personally that really transformed my own trading. And then we'll go over the trading strategies. Now, the first step is, um, talking about the worst times of the day to trade. 
Um, this is extremely important, particularly this week. Um, this week, we had a lot of major event risk from Federal Reserve Chairman Powell's semi-annual testimony on the economy and monetary policy to um, today's European Central Bank meeting and tomorrow's non-farm payrolls report. Um, I have found that in order to be um, a high accuracy trader, which means I win, I look to win more than I lose, um, which I think is essential for day trading. It is very important to know when your strategies work and don't work. So um, I am a momentum um, trader, a momentum trend day trader um, when it comes to day trading. And what that means is that um, I trade momentum in the direction of trends. And in order for momentum to um, exist, we need to have participation, right? And we need to have, um, you know, traders driving a currency with enough momentum and enough conviction to drive um, an instrument, a currency in one direction um, for a sustained period of time. And that does not happen before big news events. For example, this week, and in general, as a rule of thumb for myself and for our traders, I never trade ahead of the European Central Bank rate decision. I never trade ahead of the non-farm payrolls report. I never trade ahead of the Federal Reserve monetary policy announcement. And um, we did not trade we traded the evening before um, the semi-annual testimony by Fed Chair Powell, but we did not trade the morning of. Um, and all of this is el crucial elements and key ingredients to being a consistently profitable trader is to know when not to trade. So I never trade ahead of big news events. Um, we traded after um, these uh, Powell semi-annual testimony last night. If you check my Twitter feed, Kathy Lean FX, we uh, went short Euro yen and caught a very nice move. And I woke up, you know, to some nice profits this morning. But we were out by this morning, and we did not trade ahead of the European Central Bank rate decision. So, making sure that you trade only the highest accuracy um, times the day is essential for day trading. And part of that, and part of becoming a consistently profitable day trader is not trading before big news events. I'll certainly be looking to trade after NFPs, trading what we call reactively, not proactively, but definitely not before the event, especially since um, Fed Chair Powell gave us nothing this week. And investors will be looking for to the non farm payrolls for direction. I never trade. I think the worst time to trade is market closes, particularly, um, uh, you know, any closes, I would say. The London close, the U.S. close, and even the Tokyo session um, close, because those there tends to be more reversals than continuations. Um, and maybe that's tradable, and we'll talk about that later. But because I am a trend trader, and I know my strategy, I understand um, what you know, the market environment, my strategy works in. For my strategy, I do not trade market closes. I also don't trade early Asia. I love to trade the Asia session. Many of you are from Asia, you told me. And many people, some people say, don't trade the Asia session. I love trading the Asia session. And I have lots of strategies where I use to trade the Asia session. I would even say it's my prof most profitable trading session. But I do not trade early Asia. The people who tell you don't trade the Asia session are right when it comes to early Asia, meaning between uh, 4 p.m. New York time, which is when Australia opens, to um, 8 p.m. New York time. But 8 p.m. New York time is my sweet spot for trading. Why do I don't trade um, market closes? I don't trade market closes, Bill, because um, that's, and I'll show you later, it's a perfect time to trade reversals but I don't trade reversals. I trade trend and momentum. So because I stay true to my own strategy, I my strategy does not um, trade market closes. What I do trade and what I think are the best times for day trading are the following. I love to trade the early market opens. I love to trade market opens. So I trade market opens, not market closes. And that's because my strategy 
trades momentum and it trades. And when we have the market open, you have lots of traders joining the market, you know, trying to, you know, take either reacting to what happened overnight or, um, you know, uh, basically trying to trade ahead of um, the upcoming event risk. So I love to trade the early market open. And the early market open is defined um, for me as basically um, in the New York session, I love to trade between 6.30 a.m. New York time to um, right before the U.S. data, 8.15 a.m. New York time. Um, because you get a lot of continuation off of what happened overnight. I love to trade um, after data. Um, like I said, you know, I love to trade after Powell's speech. I love to trade after ECB. I love to trade after the non-farm payrolls report. And, you know, a great time for day trading, which Boris trades, and he'll talk about later, is the U.S. Open. I'm usually done trading by um, shortly after the U.S. data by 9 a.m. at the latest. But that's when Boris kicks off with trading. And because that's because I trade currencies, Boris kicks off with trading NQES gold at the U.S. Open um, at 9.30. And he'll talk about that later. But the best times for day trading, in my opinion, in my experience, is the early market, the U.S. Open, and after data. So knowing when to trade and when not to trade is essential to becoming a good day trader. Also, um, it is important to be aware of um, key levels. And there's a lot of ways to trade key levels. When you're a day trader, trading key levels um, is a great strategy. And one of the ways that I love to trade key levels for currencies, and Boris will share later on how he looks at it for um, for uh, the indices, yeah. indices um, is that I love to trade round numbers. And I combine this with my own trading strategy, my zip trading strategy. And so I want to take a look at this. And the whole idea behind round numbers is that there are certain currency pairs like dollar CAD, euro dollar, pound dollar, um, that love to magnetize towards the round number. And what that means is that if we get close enough to a round number, um, those currency pairs will um, touch it, will tag it, will test it. Doesn't mean that it's going to break it, but if it gets close enough to it, it will um, test it. So I we love to trade the run for the round number. So if I have my trading strategy is called zip. And if I have a zip setup um, that's telling me to sell uh, dollar CAD, for example, and you know, we are trading at 130 um uh five uh you know 50, for example. This uh horizontal line is marked at the wrong place, but it should be marked at 135 um 50. But if I'm in dollar CAD and I'm at like 135.85, for example, and my strategy has um, dollar CAD in the zip sell zone, then um, I think there's a high chance that it could uh, make a run for 135.50. Now, on the upside, on the left hand side of the chart, if you see that we're close to 135.80 and I'm in the zip buy zone, then it, and with the New York open where dollar CAD really moves, then there's a good chance, in my opinion, that um, we could make a run for the rounds number. This applies to many instruments. This applies to gold, this applies to currencies. It also applies to euro dollar, which you'll try to see in the next chart. The euro dollar also loves to magnetize towards a round number. We saw that this morning um, with the ECB rate decision. Once it turned around, it jumped up to 109. But in this chart here, what you're looking at is um, you can see, you know, this actually is the euro dollar, you know, dropping during the New York um, session and then basically magnetizing towards the 108 level. And that is tradable. Um, so if I'm close to a round number and I think that, you know, the some of the other factors in the market, um, like maybe we had weak Eurozone data or stronger U.S. data, and we're also in the zip sell zone in the euro dollar. If all those things combine together and you, one, we're trading at 108, 20, 30, then, you know, a high accuracy trade or higher um, probability trade could very well um, be to um, sell the euro, make the run for the round number. It happens all the time. What it does not, let me, I'll make it very clear, work for. It does not work for dollar yen. Dollar yen does not magnetize the round number. Dollar yen will stop just right before round numbers. Um, and this strategy does not work for dollar yen, um, but it does work um, for 
uh, euro dollar, pound dollar, and dollar cat. So once again, it's important to realize what these strategies work for and what they don't necessarily work for. Another um, key level that is um, very tradable, which um, I use all the time as, you know, potential stopping exit exit points. Potential exit points are basically swing highs um, and swing lows. Swing highs and swing lows are very, very valuable for potential exit points on um, my trades, particularly in dollar yen, because dollar yen, you know, will oftentimes struggle around um, swing highs and swing lows. So if we get near there, you know, since I am a momentum trader and not a picking tops and bottoms trader, I will oftentimes, you know, target the swing high, swing lows, and then just exit the trades and, you know, use that as my exit strategy. Boris also uses um, uh, levels to trade NQ and ES and gold, and he'll talk about that later. But swing high, swing lows are essential um, levels to be aware of when you're day trading. But also what's really important is market open and the market closes. And, you know, if, um, for example, especially with um, NQ, if it takes out yesterday's market uh, uh, market high or market close or market open and market close, um, then there's a very good chance you can see continuation in that direction. So if, um, you know, it had been inside the range um, from yesterday's higher low or open or close, and then it takes it out, um, there's a very good chance of continuation. And I think Boris will speak to some of that as well, because he incorporates that in his strategies. And another tip, um, a very, very important tip for day traders is what is the best risk management for day traders? And many of you are taught that the best risk reward ratio is two to one, three to one, you have a minimum of two to one. But if you're a day trader, that just, just does not work. Because if you think about it, um, if you're a currency day trader, what kind of stop do you need for day trading? Minimum 20 pips, ideally 30 pips, right? Um, and you know, 30, 40 pips would be the be much better stop for day trading currencies. If you have a 30, 40 pip stop for day trading currencies, then what is the target? Then if you have two to one risk reward, that means you need somewhere between 60, 80 pips. 80 pips, oftentimes, maybe not today, but oftentimes could be the maximum of the move that you get during the trading session that you're trading. Maybe it's even just 60 pips. So you could end up shortchanging yourself. You could end up, and many of you may fall victim to this, where you see the currency pair move in your favor, 20, 30, maybe even 40 pips. And then it completely reverses and then moves in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And that is because you're trying to adhere to this perfect two to one risk reward ratio that you're taught, but it just does not work for day trading. Every single professional and consistently profitable day trader that I've spoken to, and um, I speak to a lot on a bank level, on a hedge fund level, on you know an individual level, they will tell you, though they may not admit it publicly, that one to one, is what you need to go for, for day trading. One-to-one -one is the right risk management for day trading. You need to focus, in order for one-to-one -one work, you need to have, you know, ideally 70 to 80%, maybe better, um, win ratio. And that's what you need to focus on. You need to focus on win ratio with a one-to-one -one risk reward. That's really what's going to transform your trading. Because, you know, let's say you have a 30 pip um, mm -hmm. target, sorry, to 30 pip stop, 30 pip target, is much more achievable on a day trading basis than 60, 80 pips, which is a stretch for day trading. And so if you want to be a consistently profitable day trader, you really, really need to, maybe this is controversial, but you really, really need to think about um, a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio um, because that's going to make you a better trader. And what really transformed my own trading though is not only this um, more conservative risk reward ratio, but really having a trading target. This, you know, I did this years ago, but it made the world of a difference um, in my day trading. Because sometimes, you know, what's what's your goal for day trading every day? What's your target? And most people will say, I just want to make money. Um, but, and they don't have a goal in mind. But it's a very important to have a goal because when you have a goal, it's all about banking the green. When it comes to trading, it's all about banking the green. 
thanking your prophets every single day, week, month, and that will turn into, you know, consistent um, gains month to month because you're banking the green. I have a weekly trading target. My weekly trading target is 100 pips a week. Doesn't sound like a lot, right? But 100 pips a week is three to 400 pips a month. And then, you know, basically 3,000 to 4,000 pips a year, which then sounds a lot bigger. As a day trader, you know, we need to work towards, I mean, it's like a slow, a slow accumulation. Like you're basically banking the 100 pips week after week in order to get to that big number, 3,000 to 4,000 pips um, a year. And you can do that because the 100 pips a week is, you know, very um, readily achievable. So when I have a trading target, that also defines and um, defines the way I trade, because you know every week uh, go back for us. Oh, every sorry. week go back. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hold on. Oh. Every week, I start uh, the week flat, and I start the week flat. What that means is that I start every single week is a new week for me. I always close my trades by Friday, you know, 9 a.m. Um, and are you working on a Boris? Trying. Okay. I can't. Okay. So I always um, start the week flat. And so in the beginning of the week, I will trade more aggressively. I will take, you know, maybe full size positions. I will um, you know, be much more aggressive in the positions that I take. And then when I hit my profit target, I will trade more defensively to protect my profits in order to keep and grow the 100 pip target, uh, 100 pip profit on a more gradual basis. So I trade more aggressively in the front of the week and I trade more defensively towards the back of the week. And um, that is how I basically, you know, as how I lock in a hundred pips a week on a consistent basis. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. I got to, I got to stop you over here. Just one second. Cause I'm having a little bit of a technical issue. It says my, my screen sharing is paused and I can't resume the screen share. So I'm going to stop share and restart it again because um, for some reason I'm having an issue with, uh, with this. Just bear with me a second. No problem. But having a trading target really transformed uh, my trading because it allowed me to, to, to have a goal. And having a goal um, allows me to gradually um, collect those pips and work towards 3,000 and 4,000 pips a year, which we have, have been doing on a consistent basis. So as soon as Boris comes back online, we're going to talk about um, some of the ways that you could day trade. Now, um, I day trade momentum and we trade in the beginning of the day, but I'm just going to share with you one setup, which um, I think is very easy for you to follow without using my indicators. And it talks to exactly what Bill asked, which is why I don't trade market closes because I don't, I'm not a picks and tops and bottoms trader, but this strategy is indeed one that you can use to trade market closes. So are you back with us, Boris? Uh, one more second. Just bear with me. Just we're going to go into share mode. Uh, well, sorry, present. I want to present. Okay. Are you guys seeing the screen properly now? We are. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go into Kathy's trading strategies. So Yes. The so the trading strategy for market close is very simple. Um, basically, um, when it comes to trading currencies, there's a very, very high um, chance of a reversal. Whatever was happening before, there's a very high chance of that move in the euro dollar um, peaking right at right between the 10 to 12 p.m. block. And it makes sense, right? Because you know you have the U.S. initial U.S. market momentum happening. You have um, so you have the initial market momentum happening. So it's moving whatever way it's moving. Then you have data triggering another big move at 8.30 a.m. New York time. Then you have the New York market, um, uh, equity market open at 9.30 a.m. New York time. Everything that needs to happen happens. And then and everything that needs to be announced is announced. And then the currency pair ends up peaking right between the 10 
a.m. to the 12 p.m. block. This is also the London close. So a lot of London traders are in the markets. Um, there's, you know, they're they're trading the U.S. data. They're trading the U.S. equity market open, and then they're winding down their trades for their end of day. And this is why the strategy works, and this is what we want to take advantage of. Up. So first step is that you look for a big move and an extension between 10 a.m. New York time to 12 p.m. New York time. Sometime during, during this block, you will see um, step number two, a bearish. Sorry, Jesus, what's going on over here? You will see. <laughs> okay. A bearish close for a short trade. So imagine, you know, we're seeing your dollar rally, 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 and it hits a new high. Oftentimes, you know, during that time frame, a uh, new session high, new day high, whatever. Then you wait for a bearish close, and the third step is to um, put a stop at the prior high. And this is what I'm talking about. Um, it's this is an old chart. Just skip to the next one. This is um, just you know this week, this past week, or this week and last week, where you know you can see um, the first. I want to go from the right to the left. The well, right one says 11 a.m. The right to the left. Go all the way right to the right for us. That's the middle. All right. So the right to the left. 11 a.m. Euro dollar peaks right at 11 a.m. Next one. 10 a.m. on the bottom, you see a new low set right at 10 a.m. at in the euro dollar, and boom, a complete reversal right at 10 a.m. And if you saw, this is a short trade. So what you want to do is you want to wait for the first green candle to close, go long with a stop at the prior low. The 11 a.m. that is pointing to you, wait for the first red candle you at around this time frame. And this is an hourly chart. You wait for the close, you go short, and in this case, the stop is right at that high. The one in the middle that says 10 a.m., uh, once again, a new high set right at 10 a.m., wait for the close. This one already closes in the opposite direction. You go short. The next one, 11 a.m., same. This is a smaller move. And the next one, 10 a.m., also a smaller move. But basically, one, two, three, four, five. The last one does is also, it takes a little while, but eventually, you know, moves a bit in your favor. And this is a day trade, so you want to take maybe 20 pips out of the trade. But each of those trades, I think you would have gotten 20 pips on this setup. The next one shows another example, just, you know, uh, um, the following week, same story, 11 a.m. This is not a big move, um, you know, and, and this one doesn't, you can see it, it doesn't have as much extension, but still a lot of the trades, you know, you have a little bit of a move. Um, this is an hourly chart, so that marks the peak in your dollar. And then the 10 a.m. shows you that pretty much, you know, this one, you got a, a little bit of a blip upwards. The next one doesn't work. The next one, you know, the next one, you sit for the trade for a while and then it pops higher during the following session. And the next one as well. The point I want to make is that a lot of times the moves peak or bottom right between the 10 to 11, 12 p.m. block. And that's what you could trade. And for those of you, a very simple strategy that you can use for day trading the euro dollar um, at the market closes. So now um, I'll let Boris share with you his strategy for trading indices. Yeah, um, happily, if you guys have any questions, maybe for Kathy, you know, uh, while she's kind of giving you a strategy, maybe we can take some of those questions and I'll get into my strategies. Um, let's see, let's see if you, if you guys understand it. But it's very simple. I mean, what's, what's interesting here, Kay, is basically you're always looking for a reversal candle, right? It's got to be, so if you have a, uh, you're looking for a green to, to, to overshadow the red or the red to overshadow the green, as the at, at around this time as a signal for you to be able to go th the other the other also, direction. Also, it just tells you that you know if you have if you're long a euro into right. closes going well, maybe you should close the trade at that time. That's true. All yeah. This peak yeah. Effort. I noticed by the way in a couple of these things how it was flipping right at the round number. There's a it's couple better on the other chart, um, which yeah. you know you can see much more clearly, um, where you very much you know you'll see the market peaks right around those levels. Right, right. And you see, like, you know, it really flips around at, at around the uh, the round number numbers, the 108 number, and it just flips around. Like, it, it sets the lows at the round number. Which, by the way, I was going to talk to you about it. Why does the round number work for most of the time? It's because most um, traders leave their stops at around those numbers. You know, they'll leave people are just very, very 
uh, habitual and they like round numbers because it's easy. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm long 107. I want to, I want to stop at 106 or, or I'm short 108. I want to stop at 109 and bank traders and hedge funds and, and treasury managers are no different. They're all kind of, you know, human that way. So dealers know this, that that's why they love to go hunting for those stops. Once they can clear those stops, they can reverse the flow, make quick money. So that's why that strategy works really, really well um, all the time. So, um, Somebody saying, since this is recorded, will we get to rewatch the Zoom? I guess it's a question to, to Fausto. Um, no, no questions on Kathy's strategies. So um, we can just move on, talk a little bit about equities, which is my, um, my bailiwick. I day trade every single day. I day trade live in our, in our, in our chat room from 9.30 to 10.30 New York time. Um, you know, live market action, sometimes too much. Everybody's like, you're doing too much. I'm too confused. But um, we definitely, you know, show all of my trades live with all the good, the bad, and the ugly. And one of the absolute money trades that we do, we call this the big trade, the big trading strategy. Um, and by the way, I want to preface this by saying something very interesting. Uh, I wonder if, if Fausto will agree with me on this. But um, the longer I'm in the equity market, I've traded the equity market for longer than many of you have been alive. The more I'm really convinced that there's only two types of trades to make when it comes to equities. Now, this is very, very different from trading currencies, maybe even different from trading gold, although gold, I'm, I'm kind of leaning the same direction. It's certainly different from trading like oil or anything else. But when it comes to equities, in my opinion, there's really only two types of trades you want to be, long or flat. And the reason why is because, especially for the U.S. market, the U.S. market is a um, upward slanting skewed market. You know, just to give you an idea of how this translates over time, between 1970 and the year 2020, the Great Britain pound had a range of one to a dollar to two to a dollar, right? Approximately, right? From 1970 to the year 2020, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we'll use that because that's sort of like the oldest one, had a range of 700 to 40,000, right? So that's the difference. There is an upward drift in equities because they're basically a reflection of the economy, the economy grows. And because it's an upward drift, it's present in every single time frame. For example, I bet many of you don't know where I'm actually curious. So let's, let's see if you guys can guess, just put it up in the, uh, in the chat room. Tell me um, from 1950, to today, if you were to count the daily closes every single day, so this is thousands upon thousands upon thousands of daily closes, right? How many days did the, what is the percentage of days that the market closed up versus the percentage of days the market closed down? Anybody have a guess? You wanna give me a, a guess? Flat inequity means that you don't have a position. That means you, you, are, you are either long or you're out of the market. Um, Elke is saying 65%. Is that 65% long? 65%? Okay. Well, you guys, 80%. 80%? Guys, are you crazy? Oh, my God. You guys, are, you, you're, you're very, very optimistic. I mean, 65, if, if you were 65%, 65, 35, literally everybody would be a billionaire. Literally everybody would be a billionaire. Uh, somebody's saying 80. Uh, I only wish it was 80. You know, if it was 80, uh, 80 up days versus 20 down days, we literally would never have to make never. money ever again. No, it's not quite that that steep, but it is 50. My, now we're going 50. No, it's not 50 and it's not 68. So the real numbers are on the upper end of the range, around 57 to 43 over the last decade. And at the lower end, at the worst times, when, when the U.S. equity market had the worst bear market since the Great Depression, the whole 1970s, in the 1970s, when we had literally the worst markets ever, the spread was still 52 to 48 up to down, right? So if you just assume, let's assume that nothing we do has any edge, that literally no indicators, no analysis, no intelligence, we're, you know, we're just like the, the market makes fools of all of us. There's no edge whatsoever. And that every single trade is a 50-50 bet, basically like a flip of a coin. It's just a flip of a coin, right? If you just make that assumption um, and you know 
that the coin is 55 heads, 45 tails, there is absolutely zero reason for you to do anything but bet heads over a long run, especially when you're day trading. Remember, when you're day trading, you are just taking lots and lots and lots and lots of coin flips, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of samples, right? The more samples you take, the more closer it's going to get to the true distribution number, which is 55, 4, 45 against. It's just simple mathematics. It's statistics 101. There is, for that reason alone, um, and every time, by the way, we, we break that rule, we pay the price for that. Today, I specifically actually went short the market at my open just to demonstrate at how terrible that trade was. And it take me like four, four trades before we could get out of that trade um, with, a, with a tiny bit of profit. Um, it's just proof positive to, 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 to me and to you, I guess, if you were just somebody analyzed most of your trades, most of the money is made um, on the long side. So I, I preface all of this because the setup I'm about to show you can work both ways, but it's definitely, definitely much better in the, on the long side. We call it our big uh, trade setup, big trading strategy. Basically, all, we want to trade this after the U.S. Open. We're looking for a signal after the New York market opens, when you have the greatest concentration of flow, just as Kathy was talking about, greatest concentration of trades. Um, we're simply looking, nothing nothing complex. You'd be amazed, you know, the best strategies are sometimes the simplest one because um, as Kathy was talking to you, the three rules for trading for me is when, what, how. Meaning the single most important thing is when you trade. The second most important thing is what you trade. And by far the least most important thing, least most important thing is your strategy. Trust me. I know everybody does it the other way around. They think the strategy is the most important thing. No, no. That's why we are kind of, we're successful both in Forex and equities because we focus on the thing that matters, which is when, right? So very, very important. So nothing complex, but a 10, 10 100 SMA, because all I'm looking for is, is a decent signal on a um, longer term ch uh, chart. And I'm um, targeting 12 and a half basis points of the underlying. This is maybe a little bit technical for, for, for you people, but um, all, 12 and a half basis points is just uh, 12 and a half, one, one hundredth of 1%. What that means on a day trading basis is I'm, I'm basically trying to target 50 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average and 25 points on uh, the NASDAQ, okay? And it would be three points on the S&P. That's what, that's what that translates to as far as the numbers. I'm just trying to look for, you know, for short uh, day trades. So this is the Dow. Just, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of show that to you because, um, because you know, it's, it's a five-digit number, so you can really, really see how this plays out. So you can see right over here, nothing complicated, but, um, and this is a proprietary trading view indicator that I created myself that everybody in my room has access to. So you guys, you know, if you come join us, you can you can have access to all of this and it makes it much easier because everything is visualized. Everything sends you an alert. It'll tell you, tell you an alert. Hey, we got a buy signal. Hey, we got this, we got that. Um, it allows you to basically um, enter the trades with, with the help of the, uh, uh, of the algo. Uh, this little red line on the bottom is nothing more than this, the stop line. So if you're long 50, it's, as Kathy was talking about, it's a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio because that's what we do in day trading. Um, and you see how the, the red stop line, you know, never gets hit. It kind of avoids all of it. So the first signal comes in at around like 930 right over here at 38, um, 989. And it, you know, completes in about, um, in about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. That's all it is. Most of these trades take no more than 10, 15 minutes, right? Now, what you'll notice over here is that there's actually multiple, multiple opportunities to make, to make that trade. Do you want to take them? You could. My personal preference and the way I trade it is just once a day. I just I want to take my one signal, let it make me money, and I'm done with I'm done with this trade. I'm done with this trade. The other thing, by the way, that this thing does is it you know it sort of tells you first of all it tells you in in GMT time because because we trade we have a very I, I noticed this there's a very um, global audience here with, with us today. We, we trade with a very global audience, so in order to to centralize the time, it's all done on UTC time. This is GMT time of when you want to trigger this stuff. Uh, it also tells you, you know, sort of how old the trend is. And more importantly, what is the trend on the one hour chart? Because we're always, what we want to do is we only want to take, tr tr we only, only want to take these signals when the one hour chart is bullish. And this is a proprietary measure of how we, we determine bullish trend. 
Uh, also, all calculated for you. So just telling you. Basically, this will not trigger unless the, unless this thing is green. If it's if it's red, we just we just don't have any signals. We just don't take any signals. But it tells you, you know, how old this trend is. This has been about two days worth of uh, bullishness in the Dow at that time. You know, that's a very good time. If it gets to about five six days, that becomes a little bit more problematic. But generally, a two day, uh, you know, somewhere between one and two days uh, on a bullish structure, very very very. Uh, high probability trade, you know, for the US 30. So next example here, here's the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is about half that. So it's 25 target, 25 stop. Again, you see the, uh, um, you know, the red line over here. Um, and, uh, oops, sorry, did I just go backwards? Let me go back to NASDAQ, okay. Um, and, and here, I, I wanna show you that actually, um, in this particular NASDAQ trade, if you were to come in on the first trade, you would have gotten stopped out. So, you know, what happens when we get stopped out? We will give it, we will give it one more shot. So in this case, yes, you know, it's not like it's always going to uh, carry you towards victory. Sometimes you need a couple of attempts. So in this particular case, um, this uh, move failed, but, you know, the, um, the trend here actually turned bearish. Um, so at the end over here, it turned bearish um, as we were trading. But while it was here, it was still a bullish trend. And all of these trades, um, you know, materialized into, into, a, into a publish. By the way, right over here, is where the trend starts turning bearish. That's why it's you know it's showing um, showing on the chart. So at the time of the trade, it was still bullish. The great thing about this indicator is it's time consistent. So it will show you what the conditions were at the time they were happening, not what they are now. Okay, that's what makes it so really really cool and useful. And here's the S and P. The S and P is really really easy on this trade. It's 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 one of the smoother trades. Uh, to make. I think NASDAQ is probably the, the hardest because of the volatility in NASDAQ. But the S&P is, is, you know, for those of you who trade the S&P, it's a very easy trade, you know, three points, six points, you can you can totally bank it um, nice and easy uh, on the trade. Um, so, you know, Kay told you that she thinks that um, end of the day or market close is a tough period. Um, and I generally agree, except with one exception. And this goes back to my thesis that the stock market is a long trade. You buy the dip. In the stock market, you buy the dip, you don't sell the rip. If you remember, if nothing else I teach you, that's probably could be the best advice, at least for now. I mean, you know, maybe two years from now, you'll come back at me with pitchforks. But buying the dip is always a better trade. Even when it's a losing trade, it's always a better trade than selling the rip. So this is a variation on the idea of buying the dip. Because what happens uh, at the end of the uh, day in the stock market is one of two things. You either get an extension of the earlier day rally. Because what happens at the end of the market? The, end, the, the market closes. They would say the market open is for, is for amateurs. The market closes for professionals. I don't know if it's totally true. But certainly a lot of professionals will place their trades at the end of the day. Because what's happening? They're getting money during the day. They're getting inflows hedge funds, mutual funds, everybody's getting inflows during the day. They got to put that money to work. They got to deploy the capital. So they're deploying the capital usually at the end of the day when they know exactly how much money they got on hand. And that is what positions the market. So there's really only two trades that happen in the market at the end of the day. Either you get a continuation of the early you know, rally or you're going to get a bounce. You're going to get a rebound off whatever sell-off you had as everybody tries to deploy capital. And that is the human behavior that we try to handicap. So in step two, uh, we start at 1300 hours, New York. You know, I'm on, you know, I, I try to stay on 24 hour time. It's 1 PM, New York, obviously, for those of you who are not on this, uh, start early. Uh, and we buy the dip, uh, buy the rip or dip. Um, so in this particular case, we're always buying. So you want to you either want to buy the rip or or buy the dip. Either way, and I'll show you what, what that means for us on a one-minute chart um, in, a, in a very, very specific manner. So this is the um, US 30, this is the Dow, right? There are two ways, there are two particular uh, signals that our indicator uh, signals. One is this red candle, which is called the, you know, the dip candle, and that sort of tries to find the near-term low, the tier near-term dip low that we want to get into, or this green candle, which is the near-term breakout, right? This is a one-minute chart. So obviously, you know, um, you, you, you know, you can see that it's limited. And you can see the breakouts are kind of colored by orange. The, the dips are colored by purple. 
The way we trade this is really very, very simple. Um, whichever comes first, if the dip signal, if after, at their 13, the whole idea here is get into the trade, get it done, get out. I want to be out by, by 1,400 hours. It's, 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 I'm not looking to trade all of this. My first job is to try to resolve this. If it doesn't work on the first time, I'll go the second time. But I really want to resolve my trade end of the day at your lunch hour. And then I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to go um, and I can go walk my dogs. So this case, buying a dip, this was the first, this first popped up. The breakout was a little bit later. Great. I bought that at 94. And obviously that got done right over here uh, in a nice clean um, trade. Um, and then we just trade for basically 10 basis points, which is a 40, 40 points on the Dow. Um, let's say three points on the, uh, no, uh, five points on the S&P because that S&P is about 5,000 um, and about 20 points on NASDAQ because NASDAQ is close 20,000. That's all we're trading. So it's a 2020 trade NASDAQ, 5.5 5 S&P, 40, 40 Dow. That's, those are the stops and the targets on those trades. Um, and you can see here, you know, um, you know, what's happening over here is, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're buying the dip, right? It doesn't work. It starts, you know, it's, it, it, it sells off. We um, get stopped out. We come back on the second trade when, we, when it's, you know, when it's buying the rip and then it works out for us on, on the second move. There is almost always some sort of a wave up, whether it comes a little bit early, comes a little bit later. We're just trying to catch that wave up. And this helps us isolate the optimal entry points for that wave up. That's really what we're looking to do. Here's, this is the S&P. Here's the wave up. Right, we got lot. We get we get short here on the first one. I think in this case, I don't even get stopped out. But let's imagine I got stopped out. Let's. I'm going to call this. I get stopped out. I come in on the second trade, and the second trade totally resolves for me uh, on on the move up. Okay, so um, I I want to change tax a little bit here and talk to you a little bit about what we've been doing in our room because you know for years and years and years we've been doing nothing but trading our own account and day trading and just having a good time. But um, some of you may be familiar, or some of you may be very well familiar, with this incredible wave of uh, prop shops that have opened up. And modern day retail prop trading is basically a very, very simple proposition. You pay for um, an evaluation challenge, right? And generally, they can be very inexpensive, like, um, you know, we'll, the people we partner with make it as cheap as sometimes forty dollar entry tree, less than less than than a, than a brunch in, in a New York City diner. Um, and if you pass their test um, for whatever, typically the, the the prototypical trade that we usually do in, in my room is a fifty thousand dollar account. So if we pass the test, you have you get access to fifty thousand dollars of notional uh, capital that you can trade, and you get funded, and you can trade that and. That is, I think, a game changer in the world of retail for us because it allows us to do everything we're doing now, every single trade we're doing now, without ever risking a penny of our own capital. It's all the upside is to us, all the downside you know, is, is, is to the prop firm. I mean, obviously, the prop firms are, are very well um, uh, risk control, and you know they have their own risk models of how of how, of how they manage. Believe me, um, they're doing very very well. But it's an incredibly asymmetric, positive bet to the trader. Um, just you know, let, let let me just give you some sort of a simple idea. You could take 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 uh, tests, right? Mind you, you know, I passed mine in like three, but you could take 60 tests and um, not spend as much money as you would in just one simple account that, you, uh, that you've blown up on. So what can you trade on these, on these uh, tests? You can trade stock index futures like the S&P, you can trade ES, you can trade NQ, you can trade the Dow if you like. You can trade gold, which has really been very, very popular. You can trade oil, which is also super popular as a, as a trading mechanism. And of course, because the futures markets now have become incredibly retail friendly, you can trade the micro contracts. In the micro contract, to give you an idea, the NASDAQ point is only $2 a point. 
the 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 Dow point is only fifty cents a point. The S and P point is only a, a dollar and a quarter. So if you're trading a fifty thousand dollar account and you're trading sort of these these micro contracts, even if you're down five hundred points on the Dow, you've only lost two hundred fifty dollars on on a micro contract. That makes it incredibly easy to control your risk, to control your parameters, and to be successful in uh, in passing these tests. And of course, the terms of the deals are usually very, very uh, lucrative, in my opinion. It's basically six. You need to make six percent on the account without without drawing down by by five percent. There is in all of these um, in all of these accounts. Uh, there's always a rule called trailing equity. What that means is like just sort of why this is so controversial and why some people don't like it. It's very very simple. Let's say you're in a you have a fifty thousand dollar account. You're in a position. The position goes up to fifty-two thousand dollars in value, but you do not do not lock in your profit. You you're greedy. You want to you want to see if it go to fifty-five thousand, right? Well, um, you start out with a forty-seven thousand five hundred dollar stop. That's your that's your drawdown stop. Now your thing goes up to fifty-two thousand. You did not take that profit. It comes right back down to fifty thousand dollars, and now you you get out of break even. Where's your stop now? Well, your stop now is 49,500. You've given up all that cushion you, you had because you didn't take advantage of the, uh, of the profit at the top. So um, for people who are long-term traders and like to um, you know, do swing trading, yeah, this is not a good rule. For people who are day trading like we are, where we're trading for 10 points, we are always selling at the top. We're always taking our profits at the bottom. We're always, always, always exiting at maximum equity. This is immaterial. It doesn't matter. I literally, I'm not kidding you. I made 350 trades since Monday. I haven't even come close, not even, not even within a whisker of, of touching my equity because I'm always exiting out so fast that my equity is comfortably well behind me. And I'm not, I'm not having this, this whole stretch that's, that's not important. They also don't have any time limit, which is great because it means you can trade for as long as you want until you get your target, until you get funded. And then the best part is when you get funded, the payouts are really, really lucrative. They start at 80 and um, uh, they go up to as high as 90 um, in terms of you know, paying out. Some, some of these firms have a deal where like the first 10,000, they just pay out the whole 100% to you. So of course, this is why it is monstrously popular. I mean, literally, if you're not prop trading now, it's just because you haven't heard about it. Because the moment you discover it, it you, you know, even if you're trading your own account, which of course many of us do, you, you really want to trade this. Because the, the ability to have access to other people's money without any cost to you whatsoever is so positive on, on so many different levels. First of all, you have no risk trading. Secondly, you have the possibility of making five, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a month, even two thousand, three thousand dollars a month with no money of your own. Like, just think about that. What a, what a great gig! You know, I I, I spent fifty bucks, I spent a hundred bucks, and now um, I have an income of two, three thousand dollars of day trading that I that I have access to, um, for which I paid nothing, and I'm going to get paid out, which is you know really really good. Third and totally totally underappreciated is that it's an amazing educational tool. You know, they take pilots, they put them into simulators, and that is how they teach them to fly, right? They do that because they don't want them to crash planes, but they want them to have all the skills of real life piloting. This is the exact same thing. There is no difference. You're trading Chicago Mercantile Exchange prices. You will not get filled. I will, you know, when, I, when I'm leaving orders out there and I have like an order for eight and it gets filled for four, because that's what the Chicago Mercantile Exchange would have filled me at, because those are the prices. You, your experience is the exact same experience as real market experience. There's no, there's no, because um, they're, they're plugged into the broker. They're plugged into the exchange. So it's just simply that you're trading simulated funds. But as far as, you know, reality of, of, of the situation is no different. It's exactly like flying a simulator for a pilot so that you can learn how to fly the real plane. And it's incredibly cost efficient. Um, one of the things that people absolutely do not appreciate, and that's because very few people have traded um, their own accounts and futures and have traded prop simultaneously. And I, of course, have done that for many, many uh, months. So I think I have a keen insight in, into, into this little insight. When you're trading your own capital, it doesn't matter whether you're winning or losing, you're paying commission. And let, there's been plenty of days where I'm literally $500 down in commissions 
and maybe flat on my account. So what that means psychologically and physically is I'm minus $500, right? Minus $500 on the account. And then it's much harder to take the next trade because you're already minus because you, you're re, you're real money you're down real money on on commissions so you maybe you have some maybe you're smaller maybe you, you maybe you're not as aggressive as you want to be right that is a, a cost that many people only understand once they've traded live the absolutely great thing about prop is you could care less we could give a flying f as we say in New York City because it's all virtual money. So even if I'm negative 500, I'm gonna go same trade and make everything back because it's all virtual money and it does come back. Yes, you know, is the end of the day, do I have to make, you know, 600 gross to basically have 300 net on my PNL in, 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 in prop? Yes, do I care? No, because I'm still 300 net to my prop. And then when I get paid out, I'm still get paid out 300 net to my prop. It's not about how much commission you generate, it's about how much payout you get. And the fact that it, none, of, none of that commission is felt by you is a huge benefit that almost nobody who um, hasn't traded prop doesn't understand. So I say all of this basically as a way to telling you that we created a very, very, very uh, strong educational product for you that I think you're going to all like. If you want to try this, you want to try to pass the prop, if you want to try to get funded, if you want to trade the market with other people's money, then I put together a very, very simple, very easy to understand coaching program. It's three months long. You're going to get access to all of these goods. Let me just kind of go through this one by one and just show you everything that you're going to be able to get. You're going to get access to all of the indicators that I showed you, access to bounce big, access to bounce ultimate, and access even to Kathy's Zip Trader. These are all proprietary trading view indicators that nobody on trading view in public life even sees. They're not visible to them. They're private. They're totally private to anybody who trades with me. And they give you the beautiful visual cues and alerts of when all of it, all these signals uh, work. You're going to sit down with me every single day, Monday through Friday, 9.30 to 10.30, and watch me live trade. No hiding, no BS, real markets, real prices. Everything I show you, all these, the big trades, the ultimate trades, the end of the day trades, all of this stuff, you're going to be able to see it. I'm going to show you how to do it, and you're going to be able to, um, uh, to watch me and then execute yourself. But more importantly, one of the things that people always ask me um, that we haven't had, hadn't done up to now is... Um, I really want coaching. You know, Boris, I want you to not just show me how you're doing it, not just to give me the tools, but to really spend time and maybe counsel me. What am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? You know, just have a peaceful conversation with me. And we've added the coaching components. So you have three months of live trading, three months of tools, and you're going to get once a week coaching session with me ask me anything. We go through all the platforms. I'm going to teach you exactly how to, how to run um, trades on all those platforms. I'm going to give you um, strategy ideas of, of how, you know, how to uh, trade on these prop accounts, how many prop accounts you should do, what's, what's best for your personality. We're going to basically structure it so that we can give you the best possible chance of success. We have had Traders in the last week alone, I've had traders who've passed fifty thousand, hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars account, three hundred thousand dollars account actually three times in a row. Um, all of them, essentially, from a even a a, a a tiny bit of this program. This is the first time I've decided I'm going to completely and totally organize it into a winning program to make you into a winning prop trader. If you want to read the testimonials, if you just want to see, you know. The, the experience of all, of all these traders, please click this link on Pass the Prop, and maybe we can send it into the, um, um, into the chat here. And, um, okay, can you send this into the, into the chat? Because I can't it's copy. It's already there. It's already there? Okay. Click that link, read the testimonials. I think you're going to be uh, more than convinced of how, how exciting and possible it is. It's, it's really, it's been the most rewarding experience of my life to see so many people in my trading room get funded, get paid out, put these strategies into real life use and, uh, and be able to, uh, to do it. So I hope you guys can enjoy it. Now, if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to pass the prop, you can still trade all of this stuff live on your account. Every single strategy I use, you can make money with it on your own 
uh, accounts. As a matter of fact, many of the traders now are running parallel because now they got funded, they got money from the from the prop, and they're running their own accounts. You can run it on both sides. So none of this stuff is um, uniform. It, it, it can be um, allocated to both uh, directions. But if you really want to try something really cool, something really fun, and something that could be incredibly profitable, I'm hoping you're going to be able to, to come and uh, trade with me into the program because it's going to be, a, I think, a really fun experience for all of us. I'm looking forward to just doing all the coaching and kind of hanging out with everybody and getting as many people as possible to pass the test and get funded. So that's what we got to say. Uh, any questions? Any Anything you guys want to ask us? I'm happy to uh, to respond. Uh, do you get the 1099 from the prop firm at the end of the year or do you still get the tax benefits of futures prompts? I don't want to answer that question because God knows I just did my taxes. I, just, I, I, the, the, tr the honest answer is I don't know. I think it's a 1099. So it's a 1099, I believe. So it's not because it's not your, I, I, I actually, I do know it's not your own futures account. It's not your own future account. It's the prop firm's future account. So you don't get the 60, 40, you get a 1099, but of course you can write off everything, but the, but the chicken soup, it gets a 1099 if you know how to do that. So I don't want to give tax advice here but like that's basically how it works. What trading pro program do you use or advise? So typically on the future side, there are two trading programs, trading platforms, excuse me, that everybody uses. One is NinjaTrader, which is what I use, uh, which is part of, co part of coaching. This is the other really, really cool part. Part of coaching is I'm going to teach you the basics of all these trading programs because they are pain in the butt to learn. But if somebody can just take five minutes to show you, like it, it as usual, you know, I have friend, I have guys in my room who are really, really smart who understand these programs. They take five minutes to fix for me for what took me to figure out sometimes, you know, three days. I'm gonna save you all that time. I'm gonna teach you the platforms to teach you how to do this so you start off right. So Ninja Trader is one. The second program, the second platform, which I'm actually going to start, which is very, very easy to use, it's cloud-based is TraderVate. And those are the two dominant platforms that everybody trades. And of course, TraderVate allows you to also trade directly from TradingView. If you ever use TradingView, um, it really, really is super easy from there. So there's another before, question. The props have been kicking out US clients left and right. How do we know um, if there's one that we can safely trade? I think this is why futures prop um, is uh, becoming so popular and why a lot of the Forex CFD prop firms have moved to futures prop because um, you're trading, you know, exchange based instruments and the feeds are coming from um, Rhythmic and TradeVate and they're sourced and Chicago from Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Yeah, me. Yeah. So it's um, that is why futures prop is getting so popular. Yeah, it's it's a great product for all those reasons. There is never a doubt about price fill. There's never an argument. And, uh, you know, the regulars, of course, if you've seen are completely happy with it because you know they and um, Gina wants to know where is this prop firm based? This uh Apex Trader funding, which is the one that we use, is based out of Austin, Texas. Yeah. The 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 Lone Star State, they're good old boys, they're really great. We love them. Um they've just been they paid out a, what's more important, I think, is that they actually paid out a hundred million dollars to their customers um as of last month. And this is a testament to not only how large their business is, but the number of traders who are actually winning, because it means that you know peep traders are actually getting paid out and um, and you know successfully utilizing the futures prop trading accounts. Yeah, I'll tell you two anecdotes about them that really um, should make you feel good about them. A couple of days ago, there was a terrible uh, data outage on. A Ninja Trader, right? Like Ninja Trader had some kind of a screw up. The, the 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 broker just went down. Everybody got basically stuck in trades and they couldn't execute. They couldn't get done. Any other prop firm would have been tough noogies. Your problem, not mine. Um, that happens all the time. Which and it's you know true. You're right. It's written into the contract. I'm sorry. You know we can't control the internet. We can't control connections. That happens. If you know if if the if feed goes down and you're stuck in a trade, you're stuck in a trade. Can't do it. These guys were actually so stand up. They said, listen, uh, we're going to, as long as you don't touch your trades, as long as you don't touch it, we're going to reset all the accounts. We're going to let you let you, let you start. Um, they basically gave them a, a free a free try again off the accounts, which was really amazing. I was just incredibly uh, impressed by that stand up behavior because, you know, they knew this wasn't a customer's fault. And sometimes, you know, act of God things happen and, and, and you, they try to do right by their customers. So that was one thing. The second thing about them that makes them, in my opinion, head and shoulders above everybody else is that there's this tiny little thing 
that nobody in, in, in prop trading talks about called scaling. Scaling is like that little asterisk that nobody tells you about um, that is basically the following. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just explain to you in, in numbers. You have a $50,000 account and a prop firm that has a, in, in a $50,000 account, let's say the prop firm says you're allowed to trade five large e-mini contracts, right? But we have a scaling rule. So what does a scaling rule mean? The scaling rule means that um, you're not allowed to actually trade five large contracts. You need to make $1,500 in profit before you can trade three contracts. Before that, if you're just starting out, you're only allowed to trade two contracts, right? So what that is, is a sneaky, sneaky, sneaky way to limit your ability to trade leverage. Or to, let's say you have a high conviction on a trade. You want to go large. You want to, you want to pass that, that prop test fast. Um, and that's one of the things that I'll, that I'll show you. We've passed the prop test fast. We've passed the prop test slow. It all depends on your strategy. They won't let you do it. They kind of, it's like holding you back. It's basically, I think, incredibly deceptive. What Apex does, which I absolutely love, is there is no scaling. What they show you is what you got 10 contracts for, for $50,000 at the beginning of the day. It's all yours. Go crazy, my friend. If you want that leverage, it's all yours. I love the fact that there's no BS. There's just no little asterisks with them. And that's what makes me feel so good to have them as a partner. Um, however, if you would like to try prop, oh, sorry, yeah, it's Kathy. that was Kathy. Um, yes, they offer a big discount. Kathy is going to give you a Kathy is going to give you a big discount. And obviously, if you come join us for this, uh, you know, for the uh, uh, Pass the Prop Academy, uh, we'll, we'll you you'll be eligible for our special pro partner discount, and you'll be able to get great discounts from them. Uh, on everything, and we'll keep you apprised on all, on all the uh, the great things. I mean, you know, one of the other things that, that's great is that you can literally sometimes purchase eight, nine accounts for the price of one with these guys, and that gives you just incredible flexibility in how you want to pass this test, which is all going to go into uh, my, my teaching methodology. After three months, I'm very confident you're going to have unbelievably good understanding and hopefully um, some positive results and hopefully some, some funding results behind you. That's why I put this together. I really want to see this happen. So come join me. Love to see you guys there. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Is there anything else? Okay, I can't, I can't say anything else. Do you have a chance to try this work before paying for program? No. Uh, I already yeah. answered that question, Boris. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. I'm yeah. posting the link again. So this is a special offer that's only good um, for um, till midnight today. So please make sure that you take advantage of Boris's special offer. Yeah, I really, really, uh, Kay is going to make me take this off because it's, you know, as you can see, the actual value of all of this is, is something like, like, like almost 85% higher. So um, I'm only, I'm only going to be offering this for the next day. So please, if you want to come in, uh, lock it down. And then we'll come in and we'll spend three months together, really having a great time. Um, and hopefully you guys will be, have a really great uh, understanding of how to pass and actually knowledge of how to pass these prop tests and get funded. So I will uh, see you guys in the markets, right? Fausto, um, any party boards? Do we need the... Uh, somebody's asking, what is a deep dive uh, into the futures trading? So uh, if you're interested in, that's gonna be a separate course um, to help people who may not be familiar with for with futures trading, you know, are comfortable to really ease into you know it's uh, in, into uh, what futures are, how to trade them, the various platforms, the various understandings. This is going to give you like a very strong foundation on the futures as an asset class, so you can become a really good futures trader, just like you may, many of you maybe are good stock traders, or many of you could be forex traders. So this is this is a way to really really make you comfortable with the futures market. The, Neil has a question. Can you say if you have um, to pay each month for the PA and the eval accounts until you pass? I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how um, the rates are very different from Forex and especially with the discount. Yes. So the futures prop business works on a subscription model versus a single uh, payment model. But let me just show you the difference in, in dollars. A $50,000 account in a Forex prop account will cost you minimum $500, probably $600 as a buy-in fee. So you got to, up front, you spend $500, right? A $50,000 account with Apex will cost you as sometimes as little as $35, but let's make it $65 for the first month. And then um, 
you know, when you lock in the discounts, it's maybe another $38 the next month over. And then, you know, the next month over, it's another $38. It just basically repeats it like small amounts. So you have like three months of hanging out with me and you haven't even spent a third of the money up front that you've spent with a single time. It sounds really good that it's a one-time fee. It's actually a horrible deal, a horrible deal. Here, you get to rent your opportunity. And I always believe in renting. My father, when, uh, when I graduated college, gave me the best advice ever in my life. He said, rent everything from underwear on out. And it's true. You lease your car. You should rent, you should rent everything out because your cost of actual, your physical cost of money is so much smaller up front. And then you get to have all the experience for a tenth of the cost. That's why I love this model much more than the upfront model. Is this available in Europe? Yes. Yeah. Europe is all good. Europe is all good. I, I'm trying to think if there's any European country where there's a problem, but I don't think so. If you're in the European Union, you're all good. You know, you're is all good. Is Trade of Eight easier than Ninja? Yes. Yes. And, and I will tell you this. I will tell you this. I am actually, you know, everybody in my room is trading Trade of Eight. Everybody who passed all, all my tests is trading Trade of Eight. And I'm actually going to open, we, we're going to have a meeting with Apex. I'm going to open up a Trade of Eight account right after this. And I'm going to trade it with you guys. Um, it's a cloud-based platform. It's a lot easier. It's much, you know, yes. So the, the point is it's much easier. I, I went the much harder way. I went, you know, I love Ninja. I, I'm a geek, okay? I love to program. I'm a geek. I love to, you know, I love to tweak, tweak around. Really, I, I, I think, to be honest, if you look, if you're asking anybody in my room who is taking these tests and, and, and trading, they're all trading trade of eight. So let's do that. If, if you want a simplicity, that's, there, I don't think there's any question that that's there simple. Yeah. What about Africa? Um... Africa is, is, is a big open question. There's lots of, the problem is it's, it's um, uh, regular regulatory issues, you know, with lots of African jurisdictions. So I, it's an Depends open question. One country. Um, I, was, I guess, uh, no, South Africa is not permitted. So yeah, yeah, South Africa most of Africa is probably not. Yeah. Afri Africa is, is, is a tough continent, but Latin America, um, Europe, for sure. ASIC, Australia, you know, uh, Asia, Singapore, all, all those regions are, are very, uh, very open. If you're anywhere in the OECD, it's, it's, it's almost a, a done deal because um, all those countries have kind of really strong regulatory regimes and they're all very, very comfortable. And I got to tell you, you know, um, so, you know, Fausto, we've been trading listed, you know, Fausto is a listed guy. He's been trading, you know, NASDAQ and, and NYSE stocks forever, right? Um, so, when you're trading listed, you don't even think about the idea that your price could be different from somebody else's. Like, you know, uh, Tesla is going to be the same price for you as it is for me as it is for somebody else. That's a huge, but when you're trading NASDAQ on a CFD basis, NAS, NASDAQ CFD at one broker is going to have a very different price from another broker. Were you trading it on a futures firm? It's the same price. It's that price that comes from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, like I told you. Um, so it's a very real experience with very little, very little doubt about your execution capabilities. I have a question about whether I do a fundamental trading course, and I do. Um, and I'll drop the link for the um, course in the chat. Although, yeah, here's my fundamental course. Um, and if you, you ever have questions for about anything, you could always email us, Kathy at bktraders.com or Boris at bktraders.com. We'll be more than happy to follow up with any yeah, questions. Yeah, 100%. You know, and if you if you join us, you're going to get you're gonna uh, get introduced to our Discord where you can chat with us, you know, 24 hours a day. You can you can message us. It becomes it becomes a very, very, communi you know, uh, community-based ba um, experience for everybody. So it should be very good. Thank you so much, Fausto, for having us. And I yeah, hope Kathy and Boris. Uh, it's so funny. I'd listen to you guys, and it's like it's exactly you know back in the old days when I used to prop trade too. And yeah, I mean it's a good way to get started at the beginning, especially with different stuff. You know, kind of helps some people to get off their feet a little bit who really can't afford it. I mean that's one of the issues. A lot of people have a problem trading what we do because um, you know you have you have the day trading rule. Depending on what country you are, you might not get affected by it, and that has yeah. some of the PT rule. And so on, but um, but I, I'm more interested in just the classes alone. I mean, just just learning, and with what I think everyone should do is take advantage of that. Just the class alone itself, because you're going to learn exactly you know a style that's pretty similar to what we do. We trade very similar, you know, like I think we more or less trade about seventy percent 
the same. A lot of it is more just the discipline, the psychology, you know, um, the fundamentals on it. We're really, really similar when it comes to that. Um, once exactly. you get through that and you learn, like I was trying to tell you, which I'm going to pick up after everyone here, because I'm going to uh, teach you a little bit more on the psychology part of it and the level four part of it. But when it comes down to that, you really have to kind of like learn how to lose first before you can make. And it's nice to do someone else's money than yours. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, this is a, it's a great way of, 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 you know, losing without losing your shirt, you know, like sort of learning, le learning without losing your shirt is what I mean as far as that. And, you know, and Faust and I have both come from a market making background in the old, old days. So that's why, you know, the markets don't change. Prices change. Uh, instruments change, but markets don't change. We've been in markets long enough. You know, they they follow very very predictable patterns, especially on an intraday basis. They just, they, you know, if you watch the markets, if you watch markets with me for three months, you really understand everything that happens in them. On a more, it's like an it's like a three three act play, opening, middle, end. Right. Once you understand that it's kind of like a drama, it becomes a lot easier to begin to see where the opportunities are on a day trading basis. That's what I hope to. Uh, to open your eyes to and hopefully make you uh, make you profitable off of that. All right. All right. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming. And listen, Kathy, you have a very safe trip to Singapore. And if you ever need to fit someone in our luggage, I'm always available. <laughs> five, <laughs> five, seven days a week. <laughs> of course, look forward to having you and look forward to see you guys uh, back when you come back soon. And uh, guys, we're just going to take uh, about a minute break. We're going to take over from here. And uh, Boris, thanks for coming. And Kathy, thanks a lot. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. All right. All right. So can everyone see my screen okay? Just really quick. I want to share this with you. Everyone can see the uh, PowerPoint really quick. Just give me a chat. All right. Good, good. Loud and clear. Perfect. All right. So we're just going to pick up. I know we're running a little behind. And, um, you know, I want to kind of talk a little about some of my favorite trading tools and strategies. You'll see a lot of the things that Kathy spoke about and Boris, we trade very similar, but I want to get into more of the, the, uh, the style of using level three and level four. So I'm just going to share a screen really quick with you. Um, I did a really, I, I did a post on my YouTube and Instagram. I did a really big, uh, great little trade on my Instagram and you know, YouTube and TikTok. I don't know if anybody follows social media, but I don't know if anyone here watched it, but I was, I did a trade on Apple. I was showing you something about what happened with Apple. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up, listen, I rarely trade Apple, you know, but Apple is Apple and it's one of the fabulous seven stocks out there. And what really folk really brought everyone's attention to those videos is why is this stock going up and why is it going down? What is driving the stock? And that's what I want to bring up over here. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just bring this up here for you so you guys could see it. Uh, this is a stock that we're in our trading room, right? Really quick. But here's Apple. And I want to bring up the bigger chart right here. All right. So if you look at this right here on this Apple trade, right around about mid-July, and then in December, and then going into January, the stock had a very, very difficult time getting close to $200. Now, I know that there was this, this big rumor went out, this big thing that happened over, you know, in Europe, the $2 billion lawsuit was a lot more than they thought. $2 billion for Apple, they're over a trillion dollar couple. That's a thousand billions. Believe me, they'll make it up, you know, in uh, probably in one day of selling iPhones. But some of us are looking at it, but did it, I mean, by looking at it that way, why did it go down so much? I mean, that is a huge catastrophe in a short period of time. And you could see it that the stock has a very interesting trading range. And let me just get my crayons out here and share it with you. Hold on a second. So you could see how it's like, it goes up, hold on. It goes, uh, goes up, comes down close to this 170. Goes up, never made it to 200, but it came back down to 170. Went up, came back down to 170. Went up to the 200, came back down, hit 200, came back down. Now we're back to here, to here, to here, a little bit over here, and that is going way back over here. We go back in history, see it there. So the thing is this. Can anybody tell me, all right, why is the stock, first of all, why is the stock hovering and always bouncing at 170? Can anybody answer that question? 
Why is the stock bouncing right around here for the past year at 170? Exactly. Okay. If you can't answer this question, um, you should probably maybe consider trading someone else. You'll have someone else trade your money for you. Not that Thomas, it's a triple bottom. It's a support level. It's a major, major support level. Okay. Now, what makes a support level, everybody? What do you think? What made a support level? Thank you very much, Mike, Bill, Nadia, anyone else? Don't be shy. Don't be scared. Don't, you know, listen, the whole purpose while we're here is to learn why we are making money and why we're losing money. David, you're right. Everybody, if you all said the same, everyone's saying pretty much the same thing other than one or two of you. And then, I don't know, some of you, I think, are just maybe nervous to answer it. Buyers. Buyers are what control the stock that make support levels and resistance levels. Now, the problem with a chart is you can't see the buyers and sellers. But I want to bring this over to you again. Hold on. Let me get my pointer out here and bring this back. Now, if you look right here, right around 165 on the left-hand side, and I'll draw this little crayon here too also, hold on. Right here, you'll notice this big red line, and there's about a 364,000 share buyer. And then right here around 170, you got 130, 38,000 share um, seller because we're below it. And now you can see, because here's where the stock is trading right now. Look how the stock is having a tough time. It does not want to break 170. 170 is a major support resistance level. If you're above it, it's support. If you're below it, it's resistance. We broke it. Now it's becoming a resistance levels. Now, what I want to kind of show you is this. All right, let me just change the slide here. Play the drawings. And let me zoom out a little bit further for you. I want to go back in history. Now, do you notice right around $200, there's a, right here, you could see it, there is a, almost a 900,000 share seller out there. And you look over here at 165, you could see that this stock obviously has very, very big support and resistance levels at 165 and 200. All right, now let me go back to the chart. Do you notice anything very, you know, unusual about why the chart is acting the way it's acting? Okay, because the only reason why it's acting that way, it's not because of Mr. Fibonacci said so. It's not Mr. MACD said so. It's not about the RSI. It's not about some moving average. That's what some mathematician did. It's what the orders did. Now think about this. We'll get at, in the next few moments. I'm going to ask all of you, you tell me a stock that you're in and we're going to check it out. And we're going to see if you have that game plan, where to get in and where to get out. Because it's about following orders. You see, all us day traders trade very similar. The, lot, the biggest difference that separates us than other traders, which you might hear a lot of them might sound to have the same type of strategy, is that some of them are not like Boris and, and myself. We were market makers. And we never go out there and think we're smarter than everyone else. We're not out there trying to invent a new indicator or invent a new, you know, alert service. You know, we, what we like to do is just follow the orders. And that's what separates people from being winners and why they're losing in the market. So let me, um, let me just clear this out. And let me get back to my PowerPoint. And uh, where is my PowerPoint? There we go. So let me kind of tell you a little bit about what we're going to do and how we're going to trade. But before we do that, I just want to let everybody know that, you know, this is strictly educational purposes. I'm not making any guarantees or warranties that this is, you know, that you're going to be successful at it. It's, it ranges from student to student. But all I like to always remind everyone, just be very smart before you go out there and trade. So now that we went to the live markets, we looked at a couple of examples. Now, this is what we're going to cover. I'm going to talk about what we just covered, how to follow the smart money, how to use NASDAQ total view, and uh, which I like to call level three. We're going to talk about level four. Why do 90% of the traders fail and struggle, struggle in market hours? We're going to talk about large cap stocks, small cap stocks, how you could do it on a swing trade, how you could do it on an option trade, and then also how to read charts very correctly, which most people are reading them backwards. 
Now, how I got started, I don't know if anyone here has ever looked at, uh, at you know, my history, but um, I, I'm actually 52 years old. I started when I was like 22, been doing this for 30 years. I love what I do, but what I, what I love more is helping people like you to kind of realize how to trade the market the right way. And the right way of doing that is not only surrounding yourself with great traders, but also you know going out there and showing people what you do in the market. Now, at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna invite every single one of you to come into the trading room to see it live. Not only that, I'll give you some workshops. I'm going to give you everything else that comes along with it. But um, but you you could see that, you know, with Boris and Kathy being there, you know, us great traders surround each other with great traders. I like to listen to Boris. I learn something new every day. Do I really need to? And people ask me, like, I thought you're a good trader. No, great traders never stop learning. Okay, never stop learning. And um, that's how we become very good at what we do. And not only that, but when you learn from all the traders, there's always one or two things that you just at least get makes you feel good about yourself that you're on the right path. Okay. Because the more you keep hearing people that are very successful at it, that doing the same exact thing makes you know that your person who you've been learning from, that you like their style, you're doing the right thing. The hardest thing to teach in trading is more or less, which I was talking about earlier with Boris and Kathy, is that it's just mainly the psychology part of it, the greed. And the discipline. Now, at the end, I'm going to give you guys my book. Um, you can go to Amazon. You'd be happy to pay me forty dollars. But if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give it to you for free. I think you guys are going to love it. Um, I I'm also a regular guest on a lot of TV shows. Um, I was just on Nasdaq. If you have not watched that, you can watch my little trade that I talked about in the video. If you saw where Nvidia it is today, we'll talk a little bit about that too. But um, but it's it's nice to know that you, you, you're. Um, you understand exactly what happened in the past and what happened in the future. And by having a being on these TV shows, believe me, they want you to succeed just like everybody else. Because the last thing they want you to do is fail in trading. Because if you fail, it's going to be really hard for you to succeed. And they actually lose money in the long run. Now, um, just also a little history about myself. Um, I'm first generation Italian. Um, my parents always taught me, say, listen, you want to be very successful in trading. You have to surround yourself with people that are very good at what they do. You never want to be the smartest person in the room, but you also want, don't want to be the dumbest person in the room. But if you like what you do, you do whatever you can to surround yourself with people that are very good at, good at what they do. And fortunately, living in New York, being surrounded by some of the best traders in the industry, that's what I basically learned. Um, hold on a second. There, Ooh, there we go. Looks like my... Uh, this is not good. My computer's running just a little slow. Uh, just changing the slide here. All right. Can everybody hear me okay? Just want to make sure. Just want to do a quick. There we go. There we go. All right, good. All right. So um, quick question for everybody. Um, what kind of trader are you? Okay. So if everybody could just, uh, we could just do a quick, do a quick poll up there. Um, just kind of tell me. What do you guys, you know, what kind of trader? Are you a stock trader? Are you a futures trader? Are you a forex trader? So everybody could see this, um, could see this really quick. And then we'll kind of share the poll with everybody. Now, I'm an actual day trader. And just like Boris is, and Kathy's a little bit more of a day swing trader also. Um, if you want to be a good swing trader, and people get nervous about day trading. But if you want to be a good swing trader, you want to be a good options trader, you have to learn how to day trade first. Is because what happens over the course of the day trickles into a swing trade and into an investment. So I'm going to end the poll. I'm going to share that with everyone. And you could see that there are a lot of you trading all multiple markets, which is awesome. Okay. Now, just to remind everyone here that everybody here um, is going to need to learn a little bit about all the different markets. Okay. And by understanding, you know, about the different markets, you're going to know how to basically uh, find out what, what works within your, your time frame, your style, and everything else. Listen, uh, some people are Ferrari fans, some people are Porsche fans, some people are Cadillac fans, some people are Honda fans. You know, uh, it's just like a car. You know what I mean? We could set the debate, but you know what? You like what you like, but we all do the same thing. We all, we all like cars, and we all know what, what we need them for. Another quick poll question is, um, just want to ask everyone, who trained you? OK, are you self-taught? Are you, you know, are you basically a um, just want to do another quick poll here? I don't know if it can come up here. 
But um, who really trained you? You know, are you uh, self-taught? Did you learn on YouTube? Everything like that. Just want to be able to get that up there and running. And while everyone's filling that out, let me go out there and just go into what makes these stocks go up and go down. There we go. There's a poll. So just really quick, if everybody could fill that out. How long have you been investing and trading for? Let's just do that too. Are you new? Are you, depending on it, how long you've been doing it for? Oh, wow. This is awesome. I love I love seeing people answer this. Answer this. Listen, if you interact, it makes it more fun. Kind of lets you also feel where you are with everyone else. All right. So uh, let me add that poll and let me share that result. There we go. All right. So you can see we have a couple of brand new traders. People have been trading for a while, which is awesome. And I like the older people here because now it just shows you that just like you can never stop learning as a trader. Let's talk about the markets breaking new highs. So listen, we had a, we had a good run of the market. We do have crashes. We're going to have a crash all the time. Listen, I like crashes. And the reason why I like crashes is because that just gives you an opportunity. It's just not the market crash. We just talked about Apple crashing. And the question is, there's always going to be something out there that's trading the market that will give you the opportunity to do that. Now, the next thing you have to ask yourself is, when is it going to hit the next top? When is it going to hit the next bottom? We can look at all the charts and try to analyze it. But it all comes down to one very big thing. Who's running it up and who's running it down? Let's talk about NVIDIA really quick. Why is NVIDIA moving up? All right. Now, it's all about buyers. Buyers, buyer, buyers are running up that stock, okay? It has nothing. I know it's a whole AI thing. Um, I know it's all about the, um, you know, but like, but why this price? You know, today it's almost at $1,000. I mean, I try, it's funny part is I try to take photographs of this thing and I make these PowerPoints and they like, they're not outdated. It, it, it was just $800 about a, about a couple of days ago. It's just that it's just nonstop. It's pushing it up higher and higher. The thing that we teach our students is following the money. That's all you really need to do to get better at trading. If you know what's driving it up and you know where those buyers are, that's going to prepare you to where to get in and where to get out and put your limit orders. So I want to talk about the tools that we use. Uh, when is it going to, when it crash, it will be ugly, Chris is saying. But Chris, you know what? That's why I like day trading. I'm not in it right now. OK, and if it crashes, that's somebody else's problem. I'll tell you what did crash now that you bring it up. OK, I want to bring up a stock really quick here. I want to show you something. Hold on one second. Here's a stock that crashed. Did you see a stock at um, SMCI? SMCI back here, if you go back and you review and watch our YouTube channel or maybe look at our post on our X channel, all that, um, you know, we were watching and trading this stock ever since it was at 300. And you could see it ran all the way up to a price about 1100 less than a month. Okay. That's, I mean, that's unheard of. Well, actually, no, it's not. We had one couple of them. We had one just yesterday, but it did crash and it was ugly. It went from like almost 1100 all the way down to 700. It, it was pretty ugly, but you know what? It just broke all time highs. So the thing is, you got to be in cash. You just got to know where to get and where to get out. Let's talk about level two really quick, okay? Because now I want to teach you the tools that you need to succeed in trading. And by the way, what you're about to learn right now, please stop what you're doing because what I'm going to show you is it's going to be extremely disturbing because you're going to start to realize what drives these stocks to go up and down. So my question to everyone is this. Does anyone here have level two quotes? Let's start off with that, level two. Uh, yes, Chris, it's always great to take advantage when the crash happens. Absolutely. And we saw that, and a lot of people learned pretty quickly and got involved after COVID. David, you have level two. Okay, anyone else have level two quotes? David's the only one that has it. What about you, Ellen? I didn't hear from you. What about you, Mike? Irving? James? Everyone? Okay, good. All right, so a lot of you say you have it. All right, so let me explain to you what we're looking at, and then you're going to see why... Level two is outdated and is not going to help you out um, where there's a lot something a lot better. So let me just get my crayons here and let me just start working this out. These are your buyers and these are your sellers. You got three columns. This is the broker. This is the brokerage firm or exchange. This is the price they want to buy it for. And this is the amount 
amount of shares they want to buy. Whoever wants to buy the stock for the most amount of money is up on top. Whoever wants to buy for less money is down at the bottom. So what you're seeing here, fellow traders, is you're seeing what Tesla is trading at that exchange. Um, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, EDGX, the CBOE. The problem with this is that you're only seeing the best buyer and the best seller price at that exchange. You're not seeing all the orders out there. So you're kind of trading blind. You know, it's basically looking at a level one version that you see on the TV of what the stock is trading at. Now, this was good 30 years ago, but it doesn't work in today's times. So regardless if they brag about it until you got level two quotes, big deal. It's nice. It moves. It shows you got real time, but it doesn't help you. This is what does help you. NASDAQ book viewer. Now, book viewer, um, I'm almost like you could say like a, uh, a, a speaker for NASDAQ on their book viewer because, I mean, I'm on there every month talking about it because the exchanges want you to know how to trade the market. And let me tell you what the difference is on level two and level three. Level two, you're only seeing the best bid and best offer on NASDAQ. On level three, or book viewer, what, what it's called, you're seeing all those bids and all those offers on the NASDAQ. Let me repeat that again. You're only seeing, maybe if I draw it, I'll show it to you a little bit better. You're only seeing this bid and this offer. Now on NASDAQ, you're seeing all the bids and all the offers. Because you might have a bigger buyer at a, just a lower price. You're not going to see that in level two, but you will see it here. Now, let me change the slide and show you how he utilizes data. So we're looking at Tesla right here. And Tesla, from the market open, went from 181 and it dropped all the way down to 174. Now, why did it stop at 174? It looks like it was going to stop here at 177, but it didn't. It dropped all the way down to 174. And then at 10 o'clock, it had a really nice run all the way up to 179. How would you have able to know it was going to bounce? It wasn't what happened in the past. It's what happened in the future. And the future is this. There was a 218,000 share buyer sitting down there at 174. I mean, you got buyers when you look over here on the right-hand side. Um, hold on a second. Just want to get my pointers out here so you can follow along. There you go. See my little dot here? So you can see right here, there are buyers at every price, 177, 176, 175. But when you got to 174 flat, that's where you had the big significant buyer. You had a pretty decent buyer at 175, but the real one was down there at 174. Okay. That's the prices you have to look for. That's the prices that make the stocks go up and make the stocks go down. Now, let's look at our resistance levels. Amazon, great run up, nice little push. Went from 165 and then right around, you know, this right a little bit after the after hours, it hit a major resistance levels right at 175 and it came right back down to 167. That is a significant loss. And I know you, one minute you'd be making money, next minute you're losing money. Why did it pick that number right at 174.50? Well, when you look on the offer and you look at all the sell orders, you got 3,000 shares, 2,000 shares, 60,000. But right there, 174.50, uh, you had a 200,000 share seller. That is what we call an iceberg order. That's what drove the stock down. Not that you know, uh, not some indicator, not some Bollinger Band, not that none of that. That's the reason why. Why is that? Because that's where the money is. Now, let's go over a couple of stocks this week. Let's look at Google, for example. Google right now, it, it, just from seeing what's happening here at this moment in time, it's trending down. Now, the question everyone asks is this. Ever get into a trade and you're losing money? And you're like, I'm like, what do I do? I bought it. It's starting to trend down. It's like, do I sell it here? No, you don't sell it here. You got to sell it when there are no buyers out there. 
we first have to be patient and we can't freak out. We just got to say, okay, listen, I got into a bad trade. I need to know, is it going to continue to go lower or am I coming up to a big support level? And to have that big support level, I need those buyers. Now, when we go to the Google level, uh, Book Viewer, we notice we have 144,000 share buyer here at 131 and another big buyer of 100,000 at 13070, which is not too far off. So when you add that two together, you're talking literally almost a quarter million shares are going to be bought. Now, when you work your way down, you know, the buyers and sellers, 1,000 share buyers, 300 share buyers, you're talking a six-digit number. That is a lot of shares. And not only that, but those that, that 144,000 share buyer at 131, there are 696 orders around the entire world that make up that order. That's a lot. Well, when you look at the chart, and then you wonder why it bounced between this 131 and 13070, and it was hovering right there, and it shot right back to 133. That's the reason why. Now, my question to everyone is this: Did I lose anybody yet? Did anybody? Did I lose anybody on regarding the 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 buying and the selling? Good. Everybody's following along. That's what I want to hear. Okay. Irving, you're doing good. Mike, you're doing good. Bill, Jill, James, good. Listen, it's all trading is really not that complicated. The hardest part about trading is, you know, just being a, just a little bit more aggressive, being a little bit more confident and not sec and not, you know, not second guessing, um, you know, uh, your thought on a specific stock. You just get, you just got to hit the button and say, okay, listen, if they're buying, they're buying, that's it. Now, let's look at a stock called AMD. AMD, same thing. Stock is trending down, okay? Next question is, do we take a loss? Or maybe maybe you're, here's your opportunity to buy it. Well, the way you know where your opportunity to buy it is where everyone else's opportunity to get in. And we work our way down, we'll notice that we have a big buyer at 175, okay? There are 300 shares, 300, 300, well, kind of weird, a lot of 300 buyers out there. 200, 1,000. Then we get down to 175, we got 44,000 shares. So if I was to have a game plan and I wanted to buy it, I want to buy it where, all the, where the 400 orders are out there at 44,000. And then when you look at the chart and you were patient and you waited and you waited, look what happened when it got right to that number. It hit that 175 number and it went right up to 177 less than 30 minutes later. Make yourself a nice two and a half dollar trade on that. Thousand shares, I think you're done for the day. Let's talk about resistance. Let's look at lift. Lift is going up, right? You ever own a position and you want to know where to get out? Well, the only way you're going to know where to get out and, and why the stock is keeps continue to go higher is because people are buying it. But eventually the buying is going to stop. And the way the buying stops, because everybody's looking to take a profit. So when you look over here, and you look where the sellers are, that's the first thing that we look for. I, I have a profit in Lyft. I, I know Lyft was a $70, $80 stock, but for it, it to get to $70, $80, it's going to hit. Everybody's looking to take a profit. The next biggest uh, sellers are out there around $720. Guess what? If you didn't have a game plan and, and didn't get out $720, now you just convert a nice little profit winner that you could have made a nice little 50, 60 cents on it on a thousand shares, 500 bucks, do that every day, $100,000 salary. You just threw away that $100,000 salary because you got greedy and now you're down to 670. All because you didn't follow the orders. All right. Um, morning runner. Let's look at Intel. Another example. 114,000 share sellers sitting there at $44.50. You might be seeing this stock out there. You might seeing this trend go up there. What do you think happens next? Boom, stock goes down. I mean, I don't know how many more of examples I need to show you, but this is how I was taught 30 years ago. Just follow the money, okay? Okay. Remember, you did not make a single penny until you sell the stock. That's what trading is about. Now, let's talk about breakouts. Listen, what is a breakout? A breakout is a stock breaking a major resistance levels. 
So let's go to Coinbase. Here we have a nice little run. Coins tested in this big iceberg order of 31,000 shares at 186. It hit it, it hit it, it hit it, right? And then you could see it over the course of the day. It kept testing it and testing and testing. And what was happening here is that seller was getting executed. What happened when that seller eventually got executed? Boom, stock ran up to 190. I think I think actually coin is up to like almost like 230 now. So how do stocks make breakouts? Well, obviously somebody was holding it down. Someone was trying to sell it, but someone said, hey, you know what? You want to sell it? I'm interested. I want to buy it. And you got a lot of it. That's great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to buy it from you. You wouldn't be able to see that unless you had NASDAQ total view. Now, this is what we call iceberg orders. Iceberg orders are big block board orders. And the reason how I came up with this word iceberg, I actually did a video on it on my YouTube channel. Um, it's not what's on top of the water. It's what's on the bottom of the water. When you see an iceberg from a distance, it might be this little, little, small, little cap. But it's not what's on top. It's on the bottom. That thing is massive. And unless you had the right tools, like level three, you would never be able to see that. This right here is the level one. You're seeing the best bid, the best order. Down here is where you're getting to see the level three order and the level four order. So, once again, did I lose anybody yet? <laughs> Always have to ask. Always have to ask. Now, the question everyone's probably asking me right now, how do I get book viewer? Well, here's my personal email address, okay? So, Fausto P, can everybody just write this down? Or just send me an email right now and just say book viewer, okay? Or whatever it may be. Just write that down if you're paying attention. Um... I don't want to send you to the website to buy it because if you do, you know, you're going to go out there. You're not going to have the default set up properly and you might make more harm to yourself than not having to know it at all. What I want to do is um, I want to give you some workshops that we that I did on it, some very quick little workshops so you could kind of follow along as these things are happening. OK, I have a couple of ways of setting up those defaults and everything for you. All right. Now, the next question people ask me is this, as you're taking an email of me right now, by the way, I'm, I'm seeing you guys email me, John, Mike, Bill, I see you guys email me. Thanks. I'm going to send it to you right after we're done today. Um, I used to have to, have to pay $1,000 a month for this, this platform. Now, imagine being 22 years old, 30 years ago to come up with $1,000. Some of you'd be like, I don't think, you know, 95% of the people would not do it. Know what everyone says? Let me let me let me uh, let me try to make the money first. If I like it, then I'll go out and buy it. Well, I was I was one of those people that didn't want to be part of the ninety five percent. I was the five percent because you know when I was introduced, you know, and someone and um, I was taken uh, taken under uh, taken under somebody's wing to show me this is why people fail and this is why people succeed. I'm like, well, I don't want to fail. I want to succeed. And I want to make this as a career. I was that's why I'm here, and that's why most people aren't. But I got good news. It doesn't cost $1,000. It doesn't cost $100. They lowered the price down to $15 a month. Now, this is where I am a little confused with everybody in this room. Who here would not want to see more than 50% of the total volume of every stock that you're trading on the exchange for $15? Blows my mind. You know, I see people spend $15 on a cup of coffee. Okay. I see people spending, you know, $15, you know, $20, $30 now at a cheeseburger, you know, going to far, you know, going to McDonald's, whatever. This is your business. $15 you're paying. You don't want to pay $15 to see something that you're always wondering that there is something out there. Now, by the way, this is not my platform. I don't own it. I don't work for NASDAQ to be very compliant, but I'm a very big advocate for it because they know you need it. They know I do a good job teaching it. And I'm here to kind of tell you why you got to get it. And if you can't, and the, please don't take this the bad way. If you can't afford $15, you should not be trading today's markets. Okay. Now let's talk about level, level four. 
Now, level four um, is what I showed you before. It's a little bit more expensive, okay? Um, but without going out there and worrying about paying so much more money on a level four platform where you get to see the more of a heat map, it's pretty good just to start out small. But let me tell you, when we go into the live trading room, what you see here for 15, we, we, um, once we show you how that works, and then you'll see this, then you'll see what the big difference is. But right now, I'm going to treat this like when I first got into the business. Um, I am not going to tell you to go out there and spend hundreds of dollars on a platform when you could start small, which you didn't even know even existed for $15. All right. But like I showed you earlier, this is the reason what you're seeing here. Getting back to Apple, this is level, level three. This is level four. So if you don't mind just looking at numbers, that's great. If you if you need to something to adjust your eyes, more of a heat map, then we'll go there. But as of right now, we just got to start somewhere, okay? So uh, let me just clear these drawings. And I know we're running out of time. So I kind of want to, you know, get into certain things and kind of show you some things that happens. Hold on, let me just change these slides right here and uh, get right here. Okay, so how can we learn more? All right. Well, this is what I want to do. There's no better time to learn how to trade today's markets than what's happening. January, February, March, and April are the one of the better months out of year. Once you start getting into around summertime, people start going away. Kids are off from school. You know, college is done. So this is really where we've been having a lot of action in the market. Now, Cyber Trade University, I don't know if you notice, uh, if you probably don't know this, we are endorsed and sponsored by more brokerage firms than anyone in the industry. Okay. And, uh, you know, and we're, and believe me, we really take that into heart. So just having that endorsement make, should make you feel comfortable because I don't know if anyone here took any classes before, but by having that, um, you know, believe me, they do their homework on us. Not only that, but Cyber Train University, uh, we have a big YouTube channel, we have a big social media channel. Please subscribe to those channels. We send alerts. We do live trading every, we're live every morning and in the afternoon. You can watch on all social media channels also. But that's what I'm not here to sell you. What I'm here to sell you is I want you guys to come and see it live in the market and watch us do it live, okay? We are there from 7.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon. And all I'm asking for is $9. That's it. $9 is an application fee for you to come in, to come into our trading room, to see if other people are making money doing this. All you need to do is you can click that link up on the top left uh, in the chat room, or you could take your phone and you could scan that QR code on the bottom right-hand side. You can get all this stuff, the live trading room, and also you know um, everything that I told you about for $9. Now, this is what you're gonna get, live commentary in the trading room, you're going to get full access to our chat room. You're going to get traders talk meetings that we've had, hundreds of hours of that. Uh, and also what you're going to get on top of that is this. It's a money back guarantee, okay? And if you're the first 20 people that register right now, I will personally give you a free coaching class. Now, people are like, wait a minute, I could talk to Fausto for $9. What, like, does he really need the $9? No. This, fellow traders, what you're getting right now is this is an application to be part of our room. We need to interview you. Okay. You're filling it out and you're filling out a resume. Okay. We need to know if you qualify to trade. There's not a lot of you here that qualify to trade. And please, you probably be very thankful. Okay. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry would be happy to just teach you and take your money. We don't do that, all right? But we don't want every free person in the trading room. We had over two, 300 people here today. I know everyone will be there today. But listen, we can't invite you all into the room because some of you are really not, you know, it's it's not for you. So, but we, the way we know you are is just pay the $9. Let us know you're a real person. And you're going to get all this great stuff that's going to come along with it. You're going to get our book. You're going to get our workshops. You're going to get the trading room all for $9. And not one last thing, ladies and gentlemen. Um,
Because one person was asking me, what happens after seven days? Zero. We're not going to charge you a single penny. Okay. Um, we'll have that conversation. We'll let you know what we do and how, if you're qualified or not. But in the meantime, this is just a application to let us know that you say who you are and that's it. All right. And then if you, if you feel it's not for you, we'll give you $9 back. All right. All for just $9. Uh, question. So if the trend reverses and we're no major buyers and sellers, um, to the move to an iceberg. Well, Carl, that's a great question. So regardless, regarding about that, if there's no buyers out there and you might see support levels out there, why would you want to buy it? Just because it was in the past is not indicative of the future. Okay. And you'll see that live in the market. You got to be able to see those orders. Uh, another question person was asking me coming in here. Uh, when, um, when can we start? Personally, I would start immediately. Okay. You'll be able to start right after we get off this get off this event. If you want to, if you're going away, or maybe you're at work, or maybe you're watching a recording. Um, when you register, you're going to have a questionnaire, which is going to be five questions. Let us know a little bit about you, and then you're going to have a calendar where you're going to need to register. On that calendar, you'll pick a time when we'll, when we will be able to talk. You'll do a walkthrough with one of our education advisors. They're going to want to show you and give you the best experience. I'm very big when it comes to customer service, okay? I know a lot of people lag that, and, you know, we have a very big staff at CTU. We're going to work with you, um, you know, and uh, we want you to have, to you know, to see what we do here. And then, and then you'll, and then, you know, like I said, and when you're ready to start, you want to start next week or whatever, whatever works your schedule are open, Okay. Does book viewer um, work only on specific platforms and broker systems? No, uh, JK. So book viewer only it's its own standalone platform and you're getting it directly through the exchange, right through NASDAQ. Okay. Some brokerage firms do offer it, but I always tell everybody don't listen to those other brokerage firms because some of them say they have it, but they really don't. Okay. They really don't. Um, that's basically what it comes down to it. And the only way you're going to know you're getting the exact data that they're telling you is, is through there. But listen, before you worry about buying it, don't worry about it. Let's start with this first with the $9. Let's watch the trading room. Um, I'll show you the trading room right now. Actually, the student, the traders are in there right now. This is the trading room. And you could see uh, these are all the traders on the left-hand side. And um, what's what you'll notice right here is these are everybody buying, you know, in the room. Uh, right here is our alert service right here in the middle. And here's our chat right here in the bottom. You see we're posting up videos and, and screenshots. Right now we have no live audio commentary because we only do it in the first hour and the last hour. But this is everything you're going to get. Uh, does BookView give you uh, cut for new subscribers? No, JD. I don't get cut. But I don't listen. I don't need their. And even if they did, what am I going to make on $15? Okay. Listen, I don't care about that. You know what I care about? I care about people making, you know, five, six figures doing this. All right. That's where it comes down to it. Uh, any other questions? Any other questions? Where do I get level four from? So, Alicia, the level four, if you, if you click on, um, just send me an email and I'll send you the link. Where to get it? All right, a thousand of PSC two core. But before it, anyone will buy any product, let me show you live in the market how it works, and then we'll go from there. Okay, that will probably be the best way of going about it. Uh, just a couple of screens, a uh, couple of a shout outs, really quick. Uh, who do we got here? Alvin Ross from Columbia, South Carolina. Just got your registration. Welcome aboard, uh, Chantel. From Florida, just got your registration. Thank you very much. Sherry, just got your registration. Thanks a lot. Alex, got your registration. Alex R. from Chicago, thanks. Uh, any other questions? Uh, does Book Viewer uh, provide orders on NASDAQ stocks? No, actually, uh, Brady, it actually you get New York and NASDAQ. Okay. I preferably like to trade the NASDAQ because there's more liquidity on it, but New York really doesn't have as much liquidity as the NASDAQ, but you can still get those orders, uh, you know, and see them on New York. Absolutely. David, you registered yesterday. Thank you very much, David. And thanks for coming back again. Hopefully, listen, it's always nice to hear it over and over again. You always learn something new.
All right. Uh, what else we got? Uh, do you have a description of the difference between level two, level three, level four? Yes, JK. And I'll kind of explain it. Um, in that workshop, we do go over that in detail, but let me just tell you really briefly, level two is you're getting the best in the best offer. Level three, you're getting all the bids and all the offers at that exchange. Level four, you're getting aggregated all the bids and all the offers at every exchange. So you're getting one, you're only getting one times. Level two, you're getting 20 times. And level uh, level three, you're getting 20 times. And level four, you're getting over probably over 100 times of the, uh, of the volume that's out there in the market. All right. Any other questions? Now, fellow traders, listen, it's $9. I know it's not going to break the bank, okay? I know you all can afford it. So if you want to understand the concept of day trading, you want to know what it's like to be around with a 30-year pro that's been doing this for a long time, here's your chance to figure it out, okay? Um, it's just something that you need to see live in the market. And even if it's not something that you're thinking about, what is $9 going to cost you? Is that going to make you or break you? I, I I always get feel that people said, oh, don't get involved in day trading. You're going to lose your money. You're going to get in trouble and everything else. Listen, the only way you're going to figure that out is you need someone that's good at it, what they do. The reason why people fail in trading is because a lot of them were self-taught, okay? And a lot of them are just, you know, they were never a market maker, okay? And not only that, but they weren't really day trading, they, they made a day trade into a swing trade, a swing trade to an investment trade, and that's how they, they failed, all right? Does BookView work out data on futures, indices, and S&P 500? Uh, it, it has it on the S&P. It doesn't have it on futures, not on futures. But you do have it on ETFs. You do have it on all that stuff, absolutely. Any other questions? Uh, how much money do I need to get started? That's a great question that I always get. $9. That's all you need is $9 to get started. Don't worry about the brokerage account. Don't worry about trading, how much money you need. All you need is $9 to do it. That's that's what we start. Because every, cause everyone has this misconception. They're like, oh, what about the day trading rule? What about the, uh, what about the, I'm in a different country. Don't worry about that right now. OK, trading, you know, we love teaching trading. I, I, trading is one of the best jobs in the world. And I'll tell you why. You are your own boss. You can come and go whenever you please. You can do this anywhere in the world. Why would you not want to do this? I mean, look, look what happened with COVID. Everybody was trading the stock market. OK, but then you want to know what happened to all those people? They lost all their money. And a lot of them are now coming here today. I'm like, you know what? I loved it, but I don't know. I made so much money, but I gave it all back. You know, and they're like, why is that? Well, listen, anybody could have made money when, you know, when COVID hit. If you just stepped in when COVID hit, everybody did great. Okay. But I could show you a lot of those stocks that did great got destroyed. And the only way you knew that is by following those orders. All right, traders, listen, I want to get back to my, uh, I want to get back to my traders. Um, we, we got a couple of good stocks. I'm making some nice little moves right now. PLTR is moving up pretty nice. Just show you right there. You could see them. Uh, PIK, look at this stock that they're trading right now. Just had a big push right here. Uh, just ran from 320 to 440. Wow, big, big run up there. So you can see them actually talking about in the chat room. These are things that we look at. Question is, why is it going up? Who's running up? That's what I got to show you. A couple of uh, last minute shout outs before I go, um, because I'm pretty much filled up with the top 20 uh, of doing the coaching with me. I just got a registration. Few of you from out of the country, actually. Thomas, Thomas B. I don't know where you're from, by the way. Uh, ESP. I think that's Singapore, I guess. Just got your registration. Uh, Alvin, just got your registration. Welcome aboard. Who else got here? Uh, Lisa, got your registration. Thank you very much. There's the link, fellow traders. Nine dollars, money back guaranteed. Nothing billed after that. Get in the trade room, see what it's all about. Look forward to seeing you all there. And if you didn't register, listen, don't worry about it. I get it. Maybe you're not ready. Maybe it's not the right time. Um, if you watch them recording, you know what? You could you may get to hear it a few more times. But just remember, you have to learn before you can earn. And you really need to not learn from one mentor, but several mentors. All right? So we'll see you all then. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for sticking around for, uh, all the way to the end. And I'll see you all in the trading room. And trade safe.